Hello! How is everybody doing? Uh, I have a very interesting game to show you and there are some interesting news in the chess world. Uh, perhaps one of the most interesting chess news in, in, in a long time. Uh, people have always, uh, always been fascinated by computers or AI playing chess. Uh, dating all the way back to like the Turing machine and Deep Blue defeating Kasparov in 1997, I believe it was. But the news came out earlier today that uh, there is a, well, a program, an, an algorithm, an entity, I don't know. Uh, but basically DeepMind, which is a subsidiary of uh, Google, uh, has developed AI, artificial intelligence, called Alpha Zero, which uh, has already conquered the game Go, but now is trying to conquer our game Chess. And seems like it might be well on its way already. And the the, remor the remarkable thing is that uh, the program or algorithm teaches itself to play. So the methodology that's used is called tabula rasa, which basically means starting with a blank state. Uh, you imagine it, it's like an. Uh, I don't fully understand it yet, but it is like a neural network where uh, it teaches itself. And it's sort of like a human brain, you know, starting with a blank state, and you learn what's uh, in, your, in your environment. And so the program was only taught the rules of the game. And what it does, it plays against itself, and through trial and error figures out what's working. There's no... No uh, table bases, no uh, openings that it's taught. It didn't look at past games by uh, by grandmasters or anything. It just taught itself. And now, after four hours, it's already beating the best chess engine in the world. What, what's going on? Now, mind you, I'm, I'm not sure of the specifics, but uh, Stockfish had one minute per move, which is plenty of time. And uh, I hope the... Uh, the specs were okay, but either way, uh, it's it's an amazing feat, and it will be interesting to see what happens uh, in the near future with this with this program or entity or AI or yeah. But um, yeah, the games are amazing. Uh, I've chosen one game. I think I will look at more games, but let's have a look at one game and see what's going on. So let's dive into the game. In this game. Alpha Zero uh, has the white pieces and Stockfish the black pieces. So Knight F3 was played. And we will quickly transpose into a Queen's Indian, which seemed like uh, it was stock opening in, in this match. Now B6, and this is the Queen's Indian. If white had gone Knight C3, black usually answers with Bishop B4, a pin, the Nimso Indian. But with knight f3 and b6, we have a queen's indian, g3, bishop b7. And we follow the most common path here with castles, castles. And now white goes d5. This is an aggressive move because it's a pawn sacrifice. White is sacrificing the pawn for uh, lead and development. And this is what uh, Alpha Zero seemed to be doing in many of the games in the match. Just sacrificing material, you know. <laughs> without any regard for human life. So C takes D5, uh, E takes D5. I think this was first played by, uh, I hope I don't get this wrong, by Polgajewski. So this is a well-known pawn sacrifice, and I think Kasparov played this as well. You can correct me if I'm wrong on both matters. So C6, C takes D5, and now Knight takes D5. Here, the Knight jumps into F5. Even though the pawns are doubled, if we take on d5, uh, it's not a good deal for us. Since uh, black has the bishop pair, and uh, we also open up the element we just gave up to c6 square, then I can come to c6. So black will be more or less okay. The, the idea in this line is more or less to, uh, to impede black's development. And as you can see, after knight c7, black has got a lot of pieces clogged up on the queen side. And white will get an attack now for only one pawn. The queen can jump into 
the king side. Black tries to free himself with d5. Uh, Alpha Sealer took, knight takes d5. Knight c3. And well, this looks odd because after knight takes c3, do we have to exchange queens? No, we don't. Alpha Sealer attacks queen g4, threatening a mate on the g4. Uh, g7 square, excuse me. And black has to react to this with g6. And here, uh, alpha zero interposed 986 check. And now finally, took on c3. So now, white is down a pawn, but uh, there is some sort of an attack. And black still has these problems with uh, the queen side pieces. The bishop isn't active, and the rook and the knight are undeveloped yet. So bishop c8 trying to kick the queen. Queen f4. Stockfish offers the trade of queens, but of course Alpha Zero refuses, but uh, puts the queen on a4, which uh, looks odd. There's nothing going on there, but uh, I guess it's keeping some flexibility. I'm not going to try to understand all the moves. I'm just trying to, uh, you know, marvel uh, at these games because it seems like we got some next level stuff going on here. G5 now. What to do with this knight? We can't really uh, escape with it. We could go to g4. Well, uh, if I were in human chess, uh, we would probably go knight g4. But then I would worry about b5. But it seems it's okay uh, because after queen e4, even though there's a fork here on uh, these two pieces, we can escape with queen e5 here, and white is okay. But. Uh, Alpha Zero had other ideas. Activate the pieces. Rook E1. Stockfish accepted the challenge. Took on H6. And now Stockfish is up a piece and a pawn. But what happens? H4. Trying to open open lines here on the king side. Harry! 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 <laughs> F6. Bishop B3 simply developing and getting ready to get uh, the last piece into the game. That's what Kasparov always did, you know, bring everybody to the party. And, uh, yeah, Rook at one Last piece, activated. Again, goes for the trade, but Alpha Zero calmly goes to c4. b5. And now h takes g5. And now a really uh, interesting maneuver with the queen. Queen h4 check, utilizing the pin. The pawn is, of course, pin to the king here, so king g6, and now queen h1, so the queen went all the way from over here, to here, to here, and now this is a very unusual setup to have the queen in the corner, behind the bishop, especially this close to the king, but it turns out black is uh, having some problems, you know we got this uh, nice presence on a diagonal here, with the queen and the bishop, and there are some threats, if black tries to finish development uh, with, with g4, bishop e4, stuff like this. So it's not so easy. Stockfish tried to uh, flee with the king, king g7, a bishop e4. And uh, I thought in the games that, that I looked at, it seems like Alpha Zero is understanding the pieces better even than uh, the top engine. Now black has some problems because of the light score weaknesses. He doesn't have a light scored bishop. And all these squares are really hard to protect. So now just queen h3. He just wants to activate the queen, bring it closer to the king. And meanwhile, the rooks are excellent on the central files. And the, and the one on the d file is preventing the queen from coming back here. So bishop f6 was played now by stockfish. King g2, the plan is simple. He's gonna come here with the rook to h1. And the h file is, is getting uh, quite dangerous for black to deal with. Uh, Stockfish tried to take on a2. The idea here is to bring the queen back to cover the mate. But nonetheless, rook h1, queen back to g8. And now c4. No regard for, uh, for pawns, it seems. Um, I don't really understand this move. It seems like this move is just saying, hey... Uh, it's your turn, make a move. And it's not so easy to make a move. 
So let's see what happened. The, uh, Stockfish played rook e8, bishop d4, exchanging the defender on, uh, on f6. Black doesn't really have a choice here, so he takes. And still, these pieces here, they remain on their initial squares. So it's amazing that Alpha Zero is playing these games. Done material, but uh, the pieces are simply better. Rook d8. And more exchanges. So there's only a queen and a rook, but now queen e6. Most people would be uh, contemplating something on the eighth file, queen h7, queen h6. But this move it just uh, shows that black has tremendous uh, development problems. The thing is, if, if queen is something like queen f6, we have rook h7 winning immediately. It's winning the queen, so it's, so it's hard to, to make a move. And there's another threat of simply playing queen e5. Let's say, like, b4. I was thinking queen e5 here. Because now the rook enters. We go to the back rank. There are f8, we play rook here. And it's even made a few moves. And king here allows the rook to come into h7. And this allows mate here on h8. So that's why uh, Stockfish tried knight d7. But rook d1. Now this is pinned here to the queen, but Stockfish tried some tactics. But this uh, means that we go to an end game where uh, Alpha Zero wins a rook. So now Alpha Zero is up the exchange. And well, the pawns are going to drop. And let's just quickly go over the, the remaining moves calmly. Alpha Zero picks up the pawns, f3. And now the b pawn is soon going to fall. You can't take it yet because of, of the four collisions in 96. So now rook a8 going for the other pawn. King there, knight c4. And now he takes and things will start dropping. Now the b-pawn is attacked. Still we can't take it because of this move. But he takes on g5 now. Goes back to c5 and uh, now when we move the king we can take the pawn b5. So yeah, I would say an amazing game with some amazing maneuvers. And it will be really interesting to see uh, what happens in the future if, 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 if this uh, entity, or uh, I don't know what you should call it, what happens with it. But yeah, it was a brilliant game. So yeah, wow, what a game by Alpha Zero, guys. It looks like the future is here. AI is taking over. The machines are coming. They're here already. And we better watch out.